guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be talking about two different baby monitors that I used with my daughter. She is currently 10 and a half months, and we have used both of these monitors. And I had been getting requests for months now to please talk about them, tell you guys my experiences with them, which one do I like more, which one do I recommend, and all of that. So in this video, I am going to be talking about the Snooza Hero Movement Monitor and the Owlet Smart Sock Monitor. So like I said, I used both of these. One of them I am still currently using with my baby girl and I'm going to be comparing and contrasting, telling you my experiences and telling you which one is my favorite. I will link both of these baby monitors down below and I do just want to throw a little disclaimer in there that I am not a medical professional. I do recommend talking to your baby's pediatrician if you are thinking about using one of these just to get their feedback and maybe they can recommend things that they've heard good and bad about baby monitors and both of these monitors are also not recommended for co-sleeping. I don't know that there is a wearable baby monitor that would be recommended for co-sleeping. I'm not aware of any. We did not co-sleep with my daughter. We still don't. That's just our preference. I know many people do and I have nothing against that whatsoever. But yeah, just wanted to throw that out there because I know a lot of parents co-sleep. So if you do, I would not recommend using one of these baby monitors. Okay, so first I am going to start off by talking about the Snooza Hero. This is a wearable baby abdominal movement monitor. So we used the Snooza Hero with my daughter from birth until about four and a half months. This is about $100 on Amazon and it just clips on to your baby's diaper while they are sleeping and it monitors their belly going up and down to tell the monitor that they are breathing properly. I'm going to take it out of the box and show you guys what it looks like. So everything else in the box is really just cardboard and instructions. This is the entire thing. So this is just a single piece and it just has a little case right here and you can see the clip on the back that clips onto the baby's diaper. I just turned it on on accident. And it looks like this. The tip is flexible and very soft, not at all hard or uncomfortable for baby. And you just turn on this button to turn it on. It beeps and then it will flash different. So right now it detects me moving. So it's flashing green for the lungs just to say that it's detecting movement. And then to turn it off, you click both sides at the same time. So like I said, just one piece. You do not charge this. It does have a replaceable battery. And in the four and a half months that I use this, I never had to replace the battery and I used it every single night. Not during naps because she was taking such short naps during this time, but every night we use this. And now I'm gonna read you the description from the Snooza Hero that I have found on Amazon. This is exactly what they say. I just wanna like, give you guys the information from that. It says the hero detects the slightest of movements and will alert you if abdominal movement is weak or less than eight movements per minute. If the snoozy hero detects no abdominal movement for 15 seconds, it will vibrate an effort to rouse your baby to resume abdominal movement. Often the vibration is enough to rouse the infant and hero will revert to monitoring mode. However, after three vibration rousing incidents, a rouse warning will alert you that movement has stopped for 15 seconds on three occasions. If an additional five seconds of no abdominal movement is detected, a sharp audible sound will alarm. So that is just the basics on how this works. Um, this does not connect to an app on your phone, so there's no way to be able to see what's going on with baby from your phone with this particular model. But I did realize in doing a little bit of background work in this before I made this video, they did just recently come out with a newer model. That one is called the Snooza Pico 2, and it does connect to your phone through an app, and it claims to include an improved clip and better breathing motion detection, which means less false alarms. 
So that actually sounds really nice to me because that kind of goes along the lines of some of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about and the reasons why this is not my favorite baby monitor. So now I'll tell you about my personal experience with it. As far as what I like about it, I really like that it is just one piece. There's no wires, there's no charging. I like the simplicity of it. It's also very easy to clean and wipe down because this does go on your baby's diaper, let's be real, you're gonna need to clean this. And it's super, super easy to clean and wipe down. Because it's only one piece, it's super easy to travel with, and I did like the price. This is the lower priced option of the two monitors I'm gonna be talking about at, like I said, $100. Much, much lower in price than the Owlette Smart Sock. So some things I did not like about it, because this does clip on to your baby's diaper, when they are a newborn, you're going to be changing their diaper in the middle of the night. You are half asleep, you are sleep deprived as a new mom, and there were several times where I forgot to clip this back on her diaper. I'd get her all swaddled back up and ready to nurse to go back to sleep, and I'd realize this is still on the changing table, and I'd have to undress her, and that part was just a pain to have to take it off of the diaper for changing. And the main reason we stopped using this was because we were getting false alarms once Brinley was around the four and a half month age range. And that is because she started sleeping on her side around this age. She no longer was very comfortable sleeping on her back all th through the night. In fact, very quickly, once laying her down on her back, she would roll over to her side. And even in the next few weeks after that, started sleeping on her stomach, which she still does most of the night today. So because this rests against her stomach, I guess when she slept on the side and it was no longer flat, it started coming off of her stomach a little bit and it just wasn't detecting as well and we would get an alarm almost every night when she started doing this. It just wasn't laying against her skin as tightly as it needed to because of how she was laying and it pretty much became unusable at that point. So that is when I started looking into the Owlette sock. I did not originally go with that as she was a newborn because of the price. I went with something a little bit less expensive and I I do think it did its job there in the beginning, but once your baby is a little more older and rolling around in their sleep, this particular model I just don't think will do anymore. Which brings me to the next monitor, the Owlette Smart Sock. The particular style that I have is the Owlette Smart Sock 2. They did just recently come out with a three, which I will talk a little bit about, but I have the two. This goes for about $250 on Amazon. When I purchased it, it was around $300 on Amazon. I actually purchased this secondhand through Facebook Marketplace through a local mom in my area. Her and her baby co-slept and she never really used it and didn't have much of a use for it because like I said, you don't want to use them if you're co-sleeping. So she did end up selling it and I think I purchased it for around 150 I want to say. And this is the monitor sock. It is a sock and it is worn on the baby's foot while they are sleeping. I'm going to open up the box and show you guys that it does come with three different style socks. Now, when I purchased this secondhand, she actually had the oldest version with the closed toed sock, which is no longer recommended. Um, I did have a lot of trouble with the closed toed at first. I reached out to Owlette and for free, they sent me the new open toed, well, new at the time, open toed sock style. So I have the size one, which is for zero to one month. And then I have the size two, which is from one to four months and the size three, which is from four to 18 months. There is also weight limits on these. I can't see what it says for one and two months because I never even took these out of the packaging. They are brand new. We actually went right to the size three and it is 14 to 25 pounds, which she's stretching the limit on that weight limit, but it still does actually fit her foot very well. And I can tell that we'll have a while to go with this size. So it comes with the three different socks like I showed you. It also comes with a base and it's got two little plug-ins back here, and what you plug into that is the outlet that goes in your wall, so that plugs into the base, and then this little mini cord that actually plugs into the physical sock to charge it, and you can see 
right at the end of the sock there is where it charges that kind of tucks in when baby is wearing it and the monitor is actually inside of the sock so if you kind of pull this material back you can see there's the monitor it tucks inside and then the sensors are also visible underneath the plastic in the sock and then it does have velcro to go on baby's foot like that and it wraps around their ankle kind of hard to demonstrate without an actual little baby foot but it does wrap around their ankle and velcro on this side for a snug fit and i'm also going to read the description from the outlet smart sock description off amazon just to give you guys more information about it it says the smart sock comfortably wraps around your baby's foot to track heart rate oxygen levels and sleep using clinically proven pulse oximetry don't know if I'm saying that right <laughs> the base station glows green to let you know everything is okay but notifies with lights and sounds if heart rate or oxygen levels leave preset zones so basically this once you turn it on um, like if it's charging it is a white light if baby is wearing it and all of her levels are good it is a green pulsing light if the sock is placed incorrectly or it's not getting a good reading this light will turn yellow and it will play a lullaby music sound and if baby's heart rate or oxygen level is well if there if her heart rate is too high or too low this will turn red and make a very loud alarm type noise or if her oxygen level goes too low because it can't go too high but if it goes too low it will do the same red light very loud alarm beeping noise. This does connect to an app on your phone. Let me show you guys. I have it right here on my home screen and right now it's just loading and you can see I got her picture there. Now obviously her levels are not reading anything because she's not wearing it. You can scroll down and it says disconnected from base because I do have it unplugged to show you guys in the video. But I leave this screen up all night long on my nightstand and it will tell me exactly what her heart rate is and exactly what her oxygen level percentage is like I said they did come out with a new model car called the outlet smart sock 3 now I'm gonna read a little bit about that one because I just heard about this one as well it claims to fit babies both bigger and smaller so from 5 pounds to 30 pounds instead of 25 pounds so they did upgrade the weight a little bit there it also monitors babies through gentle motion so you get live readings more often and the redesigned base station offers wireless drop and go charging. I love that new feature because having, you know, cords and stuff to take with you while you're traveling is a little bit of a hassle. So the fact that they are having a wireless option now, I really like that. Okay, so for my personal experience, I kind of threw a little bit in there while I was telling you guys about it, but I really like the peace of mind this gives me over the snooze a hero. Like I said, I leave my screen up on my phone all night long on my nightstand. So I also have her screen baby monitor with the camera looking into her crib right next to that. So if she starts stirring or if she's sick or something, anything that's concerning me, I can just open my eyes, look right at my phone and see, okay, her oxygen level is good, her heart rate is good, everything is fine. And I just feel like that gives me more peace of mind, whereas the snooze a hero, you don't have that option to look on your phone with that particular model and actually see the numbers. I just feel like the more information I have, the better I feel. As far as what I don't like, about this particular model. So in the beginning, we did get quite a few false alarms. And when I say alarm, I mean most of the time it was sock placement issues, which like I said, lights up yellow. That is a totally different sound. It plays a lullaby versus the loud beeping. But either way, her base station is in our room, so it would sometimes wake her up if it went off. Um, I know a lot of people don't leave the base station in the baby's room. For whatever reason, the base station does not read through our walls and doors, especially as far as our bedroom, to be able to pick up the sock. It actually has to be in her room. I don't know if our home is made of a different type of material to where some people can get the signal on the other side of the house, but 
we cannot. So we do leave the base station in her room. And in the beginning, it really was a learning curve of how to put the sock on properly and make sure it's fitting snugly. And there in the beginning, we were getting a lot of sock placement errors, which was just really annoying. And I would either have to wake her up in the middle of the night to adjust it or just turn it off completely, which totally defeats the purpose of using one. I did actually get a low oxygen alert on this, I think twice, which was absolutely terrifying. It ended up being because the sock was not on tight enough. That way it wasn't getting an accurate reading and it was reading her oxygen being too low when actually she was completely fine. So that can happen. It happened to us and it scared the crap out of us, but Yes, so we did get two actual false alarms um, there in the beginning when we were still getting used to it. I did figure out that if you go into the Owlette Sock app, you can change the yellow sensitivity level, which is when this lights up yellow, meaning for like sock placement issue errors, like I was saying. You can change that sensitivity level from default to low, and that postpones yellow notifications for one minute. And usually within that one minute, the problem kind of fixes itself. So if baby's moving around in her sleep, and maybe the sock just wasn't reading well there for a second, within that minute, usually the problem is fixed. And since switching the sensitivity level to low, we hardly ever get that error now. So I would highly recommend doing that if you are going to be using the Outlet Smart Sock. Um, definitely, you know, see if it's an issue with you. If it is, try switching your sensitivity level it makes a world of difference and that will not alter the sensitivity for a red alert like if something is wrong you're still going to get that alert right away the only other thing i really don't like about it is like i said it's not as convenient to travel with because you do have more pieces but like I said, that new model does come with a wireless setting, so that would make traveling a bit easier. Something else I want to mention is I do still get sock placement error alerts if she is not wearing footed pajamas or at least a sock over this. So sometimes in the really hot summer months like we're in right now, I will put her in just a onesie or an open foot um, pajamas that don't have the footed at the end. And for some reason, if something isn't around this, kind of keeping it secured on her foot, even though it has the straps, I do still get those errors. So that's, I mean, it's not a huge deal, but it is something that I've noticed. I have heard stories of babies getting burned or shock while wearing the outlet sock. And I've actually had a lot of people message me on Instagram and ask me if this has ever happened to me. No, this has never happened to me. That's really scary and it definitely alarmed me when I heard that that happens and made me second guess using this. That is not something I've ever experienced. The only thing I can say that was a little, um, not worrisome, but just something I noticed with her was when she was wearing it on her right foot. So if you're looking at her and she's facing you, her right foot, because um, you can wear it on either foot, and when you're wearing it on her right foot, the monitor is on the bottom of her foot. And when she's wearing it on her left foot, the monitor is on the top of her foot. So when the monitor was on the bottom, I did notice she had like, um, it almost looked like a very, very minor blister. Like the way it was rubbing the bottom of her foot, she would get little red marks on the bottom of her foot. But I would not call them burns. She never was like crying from wearing this or I never noticed any kind of like melting or blackened as if it was had burned her which is what I had seen in stories was that you could obviously tell from the sock that something was going on never noticed anything like that since switching it to her left foot to where the monitor is on the top of her foot she's never gotten marks like that ever so that's not something we've dealt with Overall, my favorite of these two monitors would definitely be the Owlette Smart Sock 2. I know it is more expensive, which is the original reason that deterred me from buying it in the beginning, but you just get so much more information and I feel like you can use it for such a longer period of time. The fact that I ended up buying both of them, I should have just bought in the Owlette from the beginning and saved money that way. But first time mom here, now I know, and for baby number two, which we are trying for right now, 
we will definitely be using the Owlet sock from the very beginning. So that is going to be it for this video. I hope that you guys found it helpful and informative. If you have a new baby or are expecting a baby, I hope that maybe I helped you decide on one of these monitors and just gave you information that you have been looking for. So if you enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.